diddle dum dum British Strongman Podcast. So Shane, we're going to cover a um, little bit of log technique again. Um, so specifically, I want you to go into a bit bit of depth um, explaining what you're saying on the your Instagram story the other day about um, <clears throat> the the cue of uh, getting getting your head through, which a lot of people try try to do with the the log. They try and get the the head through. What what's your view on that cue? Well, I'll start with like as soon as I'll do a longer breakdown. I'll start with where at first like when I first noticed it and where I first saw this technique be used really efficiently. So when I first started strongman and I was in salt air, we used to have salt air strongman on a Sunday. And, um, you know, looking back, there was a load of fucking monsters that came there. Like obviously Hick, I was there. So I was obviously one monster <laughs> and Hicksy was there. Uh, Paddy, obviously, you know, Paddy, people listening won't know Paddy, but he was, um, Back in the day, he was an amazing log presser. And him and Hicks used to go head to head with log near enough every week. And then Paul Smith used to come down. And um, we just had log, like Damo, who like, did really well at 105 level, Damien Turner. And just loads of really successful strongmen used to train there every Sunday. And because I was, from, from like getting into the sport, I was very technical. And I'd look at everything and break everything down. And... Um, when I got introduced to weightlifting from Mark Clegg, I was obviously taught the, you know, get your head through, get your head through on the push press on the barbell and on the, um, you know, split jerks and stuff. And then they told me to do that on the log. Now I obviously started doing it because I thought it was correct. And I always remember, I've got like this vivid image of Hixie and Paddy. They used to do log together every fucking Sunday and it'd usually just be max log every Sunday and they just try and beat each other and they used to get in this rack position it was a perfect rack position the same rack position as as I was in and they dip and drive and as the log got to the point where I would have stuck my head through they would actually stick their head back and go into like a lot of thoracic extension and look at the log and press it out like incline bench it almost and then once they locked out the head would come through last now i actually remember telling them that they needed to stop doing it and they need to get their head through and it used to baffle me every week i'm like oh god if they just got their head through they'd lift more weight if they just got the head and because they were so good at it as well and then obviously back then i didn't have the kind of intelligence i have today and I just thought they were doing it wrong, but freaks. And I was doing it right. And I never changed my technique. Even when I logged 170 in my best, I still put my head through. And if you watch that video on my Instagram, I fail it first time. And I fail it because I put my head through. And I just lose all power from like my chest and shoulders. And it just becomes all triceps. So then... It came from my first strict log cycle. My first strict log cycle I did because I had a 170 push press and a 125, 130 strict press. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to bring my strict up a little bit and try and get um, it, a better ratio. And then when I was strict pressing, it felt so much better to keep my head back through the whole press. It felt more comfortable through the whole press. Yeah. So I did this full strict press cycle. And then I thought to myself, Jesus Christ, like, the lockout feels so good and so stable and strong. Imagine if I pushed the log to there and then went into this position. And that's when it kind of clicked, like, holy shit, this is what Hicks has been doing, Paddy's been doing for years. And once you do it, it feels really natural. And that's why they clicked with it so quickly on and, and like 10 years ago is because they weren't, bath they weren't overcomplicating it by getting cues and stuff. They were just feeling the log out and feeling where I felt strongest position wise and not questioning it. And that's something that over the last kind of two years I've learned myself and realized that I went wrong by putting so much emphasis on what weightlifters do to get a bar over because that's what everybody said to me. And it made sense when someone goes, well, look at the weightlifters, look at weightlifters, they put the most weight overhead. 
And then another thing that like made it painfully obvious to me that it's different is um, Clarence Kennedy is one of my favorite lifters to watch on Instagram and YouTube. Do you know Clarence, Josh? Or no? Yeah, no, yeah. I remember seeing the video of him uh, struggling with log. Yeah, so he's got a 220 clean and jerk and he was failing a 120 log <clears throat> um, because it's so different. And it, and it just kind of reminded me like, Jesus Christ, this is a completely different lift and it needs to be approached slightly differently. And I think that is one. And then I started looking at all the big log presses. Big Z does it, for example. Uh, Rob Kearney does it. Uh, Hicksy does it. Uh, Luke Stoltman does it. You know what I mean? Ian Bibby does it. Like, it's, it's literally painfully obvious when you just look for it that that's how, you, how is best to do it. The only thing that I kind of believe is slightly different and the only thing that's changed my mind is i do know a couple of good split jerkers on the log yourself is one included that do put the head through and i think on a split jerk although rob does it where he keeps his head back i do think there is argument for putting your head through on a split jerk but i'll 100 percent stand by a push press is definitely definitely better like it's just as soon as you do it, it's better. I even had off, off that story, I had like five DMs the next day. One was off, um, I've got a bloody name, Dan Hipkiss's uh, Mrs. What's she called? You know, I can't remember her name. But she pressed a three rep max log for like, or two rep max log or something for like five sets of three just by keeping her head back off one cue. Like it's, it makes that much difference. And I had like five other guys say, Jesus Christ, like, I just like did my max this easy with the head back. Um, and client wise, again, it's changed loads of clients logs as well because on a push press log, it's hard to grind the lockout if your head's through. And if you keep your head back, you can just grind and it just helps so much. You feel stable. You feel like I tell people to imagine your upper back is like the incline bench. So you need to get your upper back tight and braced in that extended position so that you don't move into too much hyperextension because then you could, you, know, you could hurt yourself. But there's this real nice groove, this nice line where you're leant back, staring at the log in this incline position your shoulders are like almost in line with your heels and your hips are in front of your shoulders. And the position to lock out there is just so strong that once you get it, you're like, oh shit, that's what it feels like. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I got it from and the story of how I came up with it. And I wish that I'd have just not overcomplicated shit 10 years ago uh, because they'd probably be there at log. So what? why do you think like why do you think it's so much different on on a log to like say an axle or a barbell for instance i think it's just due to the diameter of the log obviously when when you're grabbing the log handle in the middle and it's on your shoulders because obviously the axle is right into your you know your clavicle your anterior delts but the handle of the log is slightly in front of you hmm. so when you dip and drive it's easier to get your kind of wrist, elbow, shoulder in line with the log to press out if you don't put your head through. Because if you put your head through too fast, it's like ever so slightly in front still. And I don't believe there's any way to fix that. It's just the fact that it's two or three inches out in front of you. Um, that's why I say the split jerk, I can see the argument for getting away with it because you actively split forward so you can move yourself slightly forward to catch the log perfectly. Whereas on a push press, your feet are in the same position. So yeah. if you get your head through that log, in my opinion, is probably about a centimeter or so too far forward, which going back sounds weird but because you go into extension and you incline benching it, yeah. you're actually putting yourself directly under it better than putting your head through. Yeah. Well, th th this is where I disagree with a little bit with the the jerk, like because you you're saying that <clears throat> if you're you're dipping and then with the split, it's kind of you're dipping forward a little bit, so then you're kind of jumping forward underneath it. 
Whereas for me, like if someone's doing that, I like I think the the bar path is completely wrong, and uh, and the and the bar path should be the the next thing that you look at because if you if somebody's don't get me wrong, so some be, you see people doing like the kind of mongy split press split jerk or whatever that they do where they where they leak it out in front and kind of jump underneath it, but but really I I. I feel like if somebody's doing that anyway, the bar path is is not optimal. So I I think the the bar path should be should be vertical on the dip, whether you're doing a split jerk, whether you're doing a push jerk, power jerk. No, no the dip should be vertical. I'm not saying the dip's not vertical. I'm saying the log handle is slightly in front because it's not directly into your shoulder. You know, the, how long is the log handle? Like fucking eight inches or something. And you grab in the middle, you, you're four inches in front straight away. So when you, you dip vertical and drive vertical, that log is in front. That's why your head's so far back because a barbell would be under your chin and it would come yeah. up in the same path and you would move your head out of the way. Whereas the log is already under your chin, but the center of mass is in front of your face. So with the split, when you pop your head through aggressively and fast, I'm talking like a centimeter or so, but your torso will go a centimeter forward with the split I'd, I'd almost guarantee it because if you don't the log will just fall forward and you'll miss the split uh, when you catch it but when you split and go forward slightly you might not notice it but it's like so micro that you'll counteract that distance between the handle and your throat but i but the thing is that like i don't think you should be doing that i should, i think even that centimeter going forward is is an is an error and i think that would be picked up straight away if you were if you were doing like if that if that theory was correct, like then you do if you do a push jerk or a or a power jerk, say a push jerk where your feet stay where they are, you shouldn't be able to land that. If you if your if your line is a centimeter in front, you're not going to be able to land that. It's going to be like a messy press out. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if the if, yeah, but I just think when you're dipping underneath the log, you're able to move your torso. And but and by the way, like I agree with the fact. I think the the head through cue is uh, I think it's a bad cue anyway because it encourages people to to basically f get away with a shitty bar path and just kind of jump forward under underneath it regardless of the implement I don't, I, I don't like the cue whatsoever because I think it encourages a, a bar path that isn't that isn't straight up straight down so I think if anything um, whether I'm agreeing with with Shane completely or not, I think that the head through cue for me isn't isn't great because it encourages that that kind of you jumping forward. I think what's better is almost thinking of um, <clears throat> like pushing straight up with the arms or with or with with a lot of people. If you think of like punching behind your head a little bit, I, I actually much prefer that to the to the head through. I think if mo if most people get the get the head looking up at the ceiling and think of almost pushing the log punching the log behind them after they've extended the leg drive i think most people will, will get a better bar, bar path than they do anyway yeah mine's mainly relating to the the push press because i don't really coach a split jerk that's why i said there's probably an argument for a split jerk but i'd stand by on a push press that I've never ever seen it fail to feel just stronger than yeah. um, than than putting the head through fast. Like I say on the on the split jerk, you're talking, you know, it's such a fast movement and so many millimeters here and there or whatever. But with a push press, it's you do a vertical dip and drive, and I believe that if you put your head through the just due to the diameter of the log, like if you dip with a vertical dip. The center of mass of the log is like over mid foot. It's not through like your heel. It's slightly in front. So you have to you have to get under it properly. And I believe putting your head through makes people step forward a couple of steps. The amount of times I see people try and lock out a press and they go one, two, three, four, a couple of steps because the log's just a tiny bit in front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. That's what happens with most people. But what I'm, but I suppose my, my theory is that it is more difficult to control to get that log mo moving vertically and like 
on the like in my opinion i think the log should be start on midfoot and end on and end on midfoot if you draw the straight line down um where most people dip and the, and it does dip forward um but i think that you can get to the point where you control that bar path vertically and i agree that most people don't and for that reason that's working. But basically, in a nutshell, I think that if you had a blank canvas and you had like you had no strength training experience or whatever, you were getting into it and you had you could train like a full time athlete. I think that people long term with no hours of practice being the limiting factor, I think more more people would would get better results long term doing doing the kind of weightlifting approach and i'm aware that my opinion might change but that's what that's what i believe right now but i think realistically in the short to medium term there's going to be so many people who listen to this who really they they they, they might just be doing it they, they might be training log a fucking one hour, one hour a week, or something like that. Um, they're all they've already got a really, really strong bench and strong upper body. I think that the, a lot of people can get results quicker doing the kind of. Basically, I think it's a lot, a, lot, a hell of a lot easier to get some really good results doing what you're saying for most people. Um. I'm not saying the other one doesn't work because I did it for my whole fucking time logging, you know what I mean? It's just that when I changed it, they realized that like it took it took me to get my 170 log, it took me a 12 month peaking cycle, and I rotated through three different gear cycles, yeah, everything, and I hit 170. And then when I stopped training, I was training log all the fucking time. That's pretty much all I fucking did. Yeah. And I felt... But, but Shane, Shane, l- let me point out here, right, that you're, d- like, say, 170... <clears throat> like, you come from the kind of... what The background, what a lot of people come into the sport, where they're, where they, where they're really strong, they've done some bodybuilding, they've done some uh, squat bench deadlift or whatever. You, you, you're already fucking strong as fuck before you got into the kind of a lot of people are a lot of people can can have got a fucking half decent bench you know like you're, you're doing that what, what can you bench 221 when i logged 170 I, I didn't bench for like four years just... no but my point is like you've, you've already got that like crazy fucking tricep pec anterior delt strength that like say someone like me doesn't have for instance yeah, yeah, no, but all I was saying was with the 170 log, I hit that off that massive peak. All right, okay. And then the 165, that was with the weightlifting technique. And the yeah. 165 I did the other month, I literally just was coming back from my hand injury. I could hardly lap the log for the first three weeks of my training block because I couldn't yeah. grip it. And I was on a third of the gear just training for fun. And I got to 165 like fine with like minute like a, a 12 week training block so i know i hadn't logged for a while and i'd got stronger on strict log and bench so there's an argument that it's just that but i believe that it was the change in make sure i went back because it just felt a different i felt like i could express my strength so much better and that's why I believe that if I do a proper peak for the log, I'll, I'll be able to get um, a 180 because if I had the strength I had when I did 170, but the technique I have now, I believe I would get more kilos out of it, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you here. I'm saying that because um, what you're doing now is like with this new technique, all this kind of all the like benching you've ever done, all the incline pressing, all that, all that stuff. You bring it, you play into that strength, and you yeah, exactly yeah. You bring you bring in you bring in that in. Um, whereas, say for instance, somebody somebody like me, where where I'm like, 
I suppose like um, I'm not I'm not very strong in that fucking lean back position. Um, yeah, no, but I think, I think I like, think eventually you'll get to the point where you'll need to reassess. I mean, I might be completely wrong, but I'll, I I believe because it happens. I've seen it a lot of times. You'll get to the point where you're like, right, I need to get stronger at these weak points because they're holding me back. And then once you train those and bring those up, then maybe the lean back position won't feel weak anymore. Mm -hmm. For now, everything you're doing is working, so there's no point changing anything. But I've just seen people hit that plateau where it's like something needs to change. And for the most part is, well, let's just get a bit stronger because if you can up the strict press raw pressing power strength yeah. increase your muscle size a bit it will carry over to you like look at look at rob kearney for example when he had a 180 log split jerk in like the 105s he could only strict press like a 120 30 log it wasn't very much or he couldn't even push press around that but now he's up in the 200s he, he'll push press 180 for five or something on the log it just kind of like eventually i believe it has to catch up and even like weightlifters are a great example of it. Like Klokov has a 220, 230 jerk, but the man will push press 200 um, and he'll strict press 170, 180. So eventually I believe that stuff has to come in at some, that's what I, that's just what I've seen as well, but I've not seen everybody in the world. I'm sure there are examples that people haven't, but from, from what I've seen, eventually that raw strength has to catch up. What do you, I know you have a different view on strongman. Do you think that you could get, for example, do you think you could get, like, say, a 160 log at 90 and not need to train your, like, let's just say incline benches and strict presses? Honestly, strength. honestly, Shane, I was thinking about this exactly last night, right? And, and I believe that I will do. I believe that I will do. And I believe that I will do maybe in the next, I don't know, five years or something, like, I, b I believe I'll get to that, and um, yeah, yeah, def definitely, and I, and I, and like I, b I honestly believe I'll get to that, and I and I'll still not think I'm like like I've, I've improved loads at log in the last last few years or whatever, but I still don't feel like it's a, it doesn't come natural to me. It's not like I don't like it, and but. But yeah, yeah, I, th I think I'll, I think it'll just be be a matter of time until I get to that note. Yeah, yeah I'm not saying you won't. I'm just saying I've not seen it, which is. But I know your approach to strongman is unique, so yeah, it, it intrigues me to uh, well, my, know where it's going because you know what I mean. My my, my logs improved. Well, your one fifteen for five you did was probably your best set I've seen you do. It didn't look like there's anything on the log. Yeah, I did one fifteen for five in forty five seconds. Wow, I'm confident I could have done a sixth on that set that day. I've done what one thirty five recently. Um, and in the last whatever, in the last three, what is it, three or four months? No, in the last six months, say right. And I've done it as an experiment on myself because I like to do weird stuff that makes sense to me before I prescribe it to anybody. But like, I have actually stopped training up, like my overhead has improved the most in the last, whatever, four or five months. And it has at any point in my training career. And I have completely stopped training upper body. Like, as in like, I don't do any upper body strengthening. I don't do, I don't even do any rows or face pulls. I haven't done any rows or face pulls for about two years. Um, which I used to do because I need to do infrastructural balance and get my shoulder, my shoulder mobility is great. My overhead stability is great. My, my balance is, is feel really good. Feels really good. My recovery is great. I never get any upper body kind of inflammation, tendonitis, elbow sometimes when I'm doing loads of dumbbell, but, but generally I feel, I feel really good. Um, stop, stop doing any strict press. Like, like literally the only upper body strengthening I'm getting really is doing the kind of eccentric stuff when I'm like repping from the chest, which I don't do much of. I do mostly 
press it, push presses and uh, jerk variations after a after a clean, um, and then eliminate the set like even eliminate the eccentric on the overhead movement. So so I don't so I don't kind of get the soreness and yeah. Um, I don't do any bench. I don't do any incline or anything like that. And like I just feel like my overhead is just blowing up and I don't see how it can I don't I don't <clears throat> I don't see how it, how it's like it's ever gonna stop really. Because from what, what I've seen what feel feel like right now. What I've seen the people that do like that is <clears throat> this is my opinion, it is people that are young in training age can the first three to five years just is just you feel good and then it's like you go to you, you get a sh one shoulder problem and then that's when it's like oh you need to do this stuff you know you, you've not done this not done that so i completely cannot see and understand how it's but that, but that's what like that's when I used to get I I used to train like that and I used to get I used to get these little niggles and injuries and stuff. I used to like be I used to be at three one five and be jealous of people doing like five by five at seventy kilo push press. I couldn't fucking do it. I couldn't rep from the shoulders because my like both my shoulders crunched, my elbows hurt, my wrists hurt. Like mm -hmm. so that's when I started to learn about like taking out the eccentric and stuff, and that was uh, allowing me to recover. Like I, when I used to bench a lot and do a lot of incline bench and stuff, I used to really struggle with my like holding weights overhead because I used to struggle with my my overhead positioning. I used to get tight in my anterior deltoid. So I'd be thinking, oh, I'm a fucking training bench again or whatever a few days later and my joints are still sore. So it, so that that's part of the kind of like, obviously it's quite like maybe quite unique how I do it, but, but actually similar to like the deadlift stuff that we've talked extensively about, like actually this kind of method that I use, it was actually born out of recovery management really because it was, well, well how can I get loads of practice in without my, without my knees hurting with that on the dip, without my shoulders hurting, doing the eccentrics, without my bike getting like bicep tendonitis, doing fucking lower into the chest and stuff. And that's how, um, and like <clears throat> the amount of people have like told me over the last couple of years that, um, oh, you, it's not going to work doing that way. You, you're not going to, oh, you, you're not going to be able to do a hundred kilo. You're not going to be able to do a 110 log doing it that way. You're not going to be able to do a, and like most of these people that said I couldn't do it, I'm fucking better than now anyway. And lifting big, bigger weight, bigger, bigger weights than they're doing anyway. Like a, a, a lot of these pe people who said said the the way wouldn't work, and the 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 thing is, I, d I don't feel like, I, and and obviously my training age is a lot newer than yours, Shane. I do respect that, um, but I've I've never re I've never I haven't done like a cycle of a certain variation or method or whatever, and thought, fuck me, this is getting hard to progress now. It's like yeah, no, that's that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying to you. Like, I completely think, and I know it will get it's fine, and I, and I hope you don't get anything because it's, I I find it really interesting watching it. It's just everything I've seen, something eventually gives, and that's why it's so common for people to talk about the bullshit, if you want to call it that. You know, the face pulls and this and the extra notations and that because it just. For, from what I've seen, it always crops up eventually. Um, and within the first kind of five years of like strength training, personally, I think you can just like, I used to train like a fucking retard, like everything about it was wrong. Not a single, like would never even have said to anybody that, you know, I could stop progressing or, cause it was just like, well, I'm fine. Like everything feels fine. Like everything feels great. <laughs> but then, just as you get into like the delving into your five, six, seventh, eighth year of it, just the repetitive strain of the same movement yeah. pattern over and over starts to take its toll. And then that's when rotating variations and stuff comes into play. 
because I know you said you got a bit like tendonitis on your elbow, but imagine if you did log for eight weeks in a row, once a week, and you got tendonitis, you know, then suddenly you've got to take the log out. You don't want to, but you've but, got but the, to. But the thing is, like, I, I feel like so in tune with with my body and recovery and stuff like that, that any kind of little niggle that I get, I just alter the... I just alter one of the variables and, and and never have to stop training. Whereas like, say four or five years ago, because I, I have like, I haven't been doing it as sport for that long, but I've, I suppose I've been lifting weights for nearly six or seven years now or whatever. Um, and when I used to play football and just do it to improve my other sport and stuff, like all these, all these little things that you mentioned, like say these little niggles and stuff, I was getting all the time. I was getting bad knees from squatting. I was getting a bad back from deadlifting. I was getting sore shoulders from uh, doing pressing. I was getting uh, anterior delt pain from from doing from benching and stuff. But I suppose my, my <clears throat> I suppose what I'm saying is that there are there are actually so many other ways to get around to manage these kind of like uh, variables and stuff than. That yeah, than, I know you saying the, than just the traditional way. Like it, it's not that my training age is still young and I'm still yet to meet these meet these things. Like I've literally had like most of the problems and niggles at every joint in my body over the course of the last seven and eight years playing sport and lifting weights at the same time. And I'm saying right now, I'm currently not only doing the doing the best in terms of what I'm lifting and performance and stuff but I'm actually I feel like my recovery is fucking um, like brilliant and you no know, I agree but I and, also, I, and, I, and I don't believe it's lo- lo- now, now you I also believe that you were a fat bastard before you took this seriously and now your work capacity is crazy which I think that is the biggest difference between how you feel like you could do a 20 minute emom or something now Axel fought over at two reps and you would be fine. You, you wouldn't be gassed at the end. You'd just be fine. Whereas if you'd done that a couple of years ago, yeah, you'd, you'd have had a back pump, you'd have had this, you'd have had but, that. But equally, equally, Shane, equally Shane, like I attribute a lot of it to, to actually experience and knowledge and, and application and stuff like, like and that and that's why I feel like I can I, I can I can like go heavy quite often. Like a lot of people see me lifting on Instagram and think, oh, you you're going you you you're doing a like a relative max again or whatever. Um, but equally, like I I know when I need to. I know I'll happily back I'll happily back things off and I'll happily right. I know that if I do if I keep going what I'm supposed to do today. I know that 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 knee's going to flare up if I got so. What I'm going to do? I'm going to back off on that and then go go and um, go and put some skill um, skill work on in something like basically cycling the intensities and and stuff yeah. to, as well as the variations and that. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll we'll re- revisit this conversation because it is interesting, isn't it? Like we're. Yeah, I just think it's, uh, for me, I'm not sceptical. I just, I just, you know, when you've just not not seen something before. Well, I've seen it before, but I've just seen it for a period of three to five years. And I've never seen someone with longevity in the sport that trains like this. And I feel like there's a reason why, but I've never been this involved with someone. Like I've seen people that train like this online before, and then I don't follow them that religiously. And then next minute they're in physio and oh, I've neglected these muscles for six years. I need to sort them out because this is why my shoulder's fucked. And I just see stuff like that all the time. Whereas with you, I've actually actively seen you and followed you. And obviously you're a little bit more knowledgeable than the, the people that I've seen do it before as well. And like you say, you rotate for everything. So I do think it, could work when I say skeptical I mean skeptical to I would never prescribe it because I don't know yeah I don't know the end result but I'm actively intrigued and watching yeah whereas where where I'm at at the minute is like I just think that all these methods that people that people say the 
the the usual methods that people like that's how I started off and that's why I was like I was getting it was it was causing problems for me and causing problems for clients and stuff people were getting injured doing doing this way doing the traditional way but actually I've just taken that away ignored everything that fucking anybody's ever said to me and then gone and applied this other way that's actually with a view to it actually being safer even though it's not the typical way of doing things and then like the the results are just just uh, just great really good like uh, uh, so some of the some of the guys that I coach you've been like training a lot longer than me and then they've hit like plateaus on certain lifts or whatever just do, just doing your kind of typical kind of logical me- the methods that and then we've cha- changed up the var- variables and um gone against the grain somewhat or the usual grain and um just like some for like crazy results it's mad yeah, but anyway the one, thing that, the one thing that your method does really well and this is this is where my issue comes with it is your method i believe that obviously we know strength is neurological so it's the ability for the brain to express the strength of the muscle to its maximum potential i believe that getting a muscle to its potential takes a lot longer than what people think. Like, yeah. I think that's why lightweights can get so strong if they put the years in because they're learning to get more out of the fibers. Yeah, they- exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think your way of training allows people to, if they're at a point where they've not built any more muscle, but they're only expressing 80% of their potential strength, I think you're really good at getting them to be able to use everything that they've got but once they get to that point where you've used everything you've got you need to add more tissue and then without eccentrics and assistance exercises there you can't add more tissue so the potential strength of that human is limited by his size but then if you have all these things in the background all the time they'd be constantly because especially when you're natural the gaining muscle is so slow that you're not going to like see it but it's going to be there and that way the the maximum potential strength of that human is like steadily going up as well so then you can always push past that plus so basically what i'm saying is i think it takes probably years and years to get to that point but eventually i feel as though something will need to change to add more tissue to your frame i don't know when that is though like could it be at a world record log under 90? Maybe. I don't fucking know. Or could it be at 140, 150? Don't know. Um, until until you fucking put the years in, we'll never know. But it's just kind of like, that's like a proven thing. So I know it will happen at some point, but no one's, I've never seen anyone. I suppose, I suppose what I'm, I'm saying, my opinion is that, that fucking hell, you can get a lot more neurological progress than what people think like you see people like fucking, yeah and i agree 100 like, percent. see see people like wanting to you see like 120 kilo guys 130 kilo guys getting to a fucking 200 kilo deadlift pb and then thinking that they they need to go and put on a couple more kilos of mass to get to 220 yeah, like, no, it, yeah. It, it's um and that's where you've opened my eyes a lot is i believe that I've changed, you've changed my opinion on how far you can push that neurological side of stuff. Like a lot, you changed my opinion a lot, but I still believe that at some point there'll be a threshold, but you've already taken it past kind of where I thought. So now I'm thinking like, what, what is the limit kind of thing? It's interesting to watch, especially with like twins. I find twins very interesting because I know they're very specialized in the deadlift, but the deadlift is world class. Yeah, and... but, but but also as well, like like yeah, yeah, the say they're specialized in the deadlift, but like the 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 good at the good at everything for and like the they still they're still new to it. The the st- the the strong all around, they can push press one thirty, they can they yeah, can... I mean relative, like 
if someone's got a 350 dead and a 130 push, I'd say they're a specialist. Yeah, in terms of, you know, in terms of the skill set of the body weight, that's what I mean. But what I'm saying is it's like a world-class number, so there's no arguing with it, and they're still progressing at a rate that is quicker than what most people progress um, at those kind of numbers on a bit of gear. So it shows that they're able to extract, they're still extracting more out of the frame they've got. Yeah, but the, but this is where it goes back to the the method methodology and and te- and um, and technique as well. Like like I believe that their their technique on a conventional deadlift is absolutely incredible. Like I think the the positioning that like I, I just think it's absolutely brilliant and just so efficient and come as a result of so many the fact the fact is they they'll have done more reps than maybe anybody in the world over the last year two years like that i i, I, gen, I genuinely believe that and that's how um i don't know what the fucking point is but well, that's what same thing as what i was saying that i'm just saying that they've pushed their muscles past the point of what I would have thought they could go to naturally without increasing the muscle size. Like they're still fucking yeah. string beans and they're still extracting strength out of that well, frame. That, that's it. They, they're getting lighter. They're like fucking 88 kilos now, at the minute. Yeah, which is what I was saying as, as in, when I say you've changed my opinion on how much you can extract out of a muscle, I think it's a lot more than what, what the studies have shown um, because well, they're still fucking going, basically. Um, and oftentimes when people like, when people compare it to like a push press, like when, when, I, when I think of a 130 push press, like I wouldn't even consider it like if they trained it all the time or what, I think it's, too, it's, it's light. But with the deadlifts, that's where it's like, oh, okay, it's yeah. really well, taxing and well, they're <clears throat> still recovering and they're still doing this and that. So it's kind of, it, that's where it changes my opinion on it. Hmm. But the, but then it goes it goes back to the method like they're, they're baffled that they, they look at like say what like they see on Instagram what other people are do, what some other people might be doing in the program and they'll be like cr- cringing at it thinking fuck me that seems that that would be really hard if we did that we like that they they see their program as not e- not even difficult they you come in and you might. They, they might post something on Instagram where they're fucking grinding a rep max out like once a week or once a fortnight for one set. But if you watch the the majority of their reps, it's just it's just clean, fast. Whereas you see a lot of a lot of people posting stuff and the and 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 it's just grindy reps all the time. Yeah, and and I. Anyway, we're fucking going around in circles. because we've talked about this end- endlessly, haven't we? But um, I just like chatting shit, me, Josh. I forget him on this podcast. But yeah, the, the 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 other the other thing I wanted to, wanted to talk about with the the head three thing, which I think is really re- really good, is um, like for strongman. So if you're talking about Shane's technique that we start that we started talking about earlier on, I I think getting confident with that technique is going to be really really. Uh, good for stuff like block presses stone presses um natural stones and stuff like that um whereas like um for example the that's I did, kind of I, the only way that's kind of the only way to do them really isn't it to be honest well if you went if um i did i did a comp at hull earlier in the year and it had an overhead medley in it and i hadn't really trained block press whatever and I just thought it was going to be strong enough to blag, blag my way through it on the day. And I just like kind of did this clean where I chucked it up and caught it in midair. And then I tried to push press it like I normally would a log. But it was just what it just, like, like you were describing about the log before, like it was just way, way too far out in front of me. And it was just felt heavy as fuck in the rack. And I just, just couldn't do it for the for the life of me. Whereas now what I would do would be I'd be I'd train that kind of hyperextended back position 
turn it turn it into like a kind of a bit of a basically like a bit of an incline press with a little bit of a dip to give you a bit of a head start. You know what I mean, Shane, don't you? That, yeah, still, I, I call that the Olympic bent press because that's yeah. what they did. They kind of like hyperx in the spine and then use a little bit of flexion to kind of push it up without the legs bending. But then the Sergi, whatever he's called, did a 500 pound one where he bent his legs and got away with it. And I think that's why they changed the rule. But that's how I actually teach like people to do it now who struggle with the push press timing is to do the cheaty version of that where you bend your yeah. knees. You so... Get, yeah. Even on the natural stone, you can get a little bit of leg drive. So yeah. So even th so so going back to the original point now, right, I I can see this as clear as day. How it'd be so like I'm picturing myself with that block because it's so far out in front that I can't get a. I'm really str I'd be struggling. I'm struggling to get a rack position and a vertical dip, basically, to use my usual technique. Um. So. I would go to basically I'm going into I'm thinking of going into hyper extension and really leaning back. So the object is actually down over mid foot in the rack position. Does that make sense, Jay? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, say, kind of my kind of why my the jury's still out with the with the log is because I actually feel that with a bit of um with a little bit a little bit of flexibility work and a little bit of stability and awareness work, I think most people can get a pretty decent rack position where they can even even on a 13 inch log i feel like most people can get a rack position where they can dip keep it over mid foot um and 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 basically get that that per perfect line if it was much bigger if it was like say it's an 18 inch log then i could see um that that technique being more relevant or a more awkward object than um but basically, basically, my theory on uh, my theory on log is that pe people's control of the rack, people's technique on sh on log is shit generally, and people can't control that rack position. So you've got basically two ways that are going to work. You've got you've got the way that the the way that you that you that you're saying Shane, which I feel has got like a really really. Um, it's a lot easier to learn, I think. And it comes down to what type of lifter you are as well, doesn't it? Like, like you say, if you've got that background strength where you're strong at pressing on bench and incline, that's kind of where you've yeah. come from. Yeah. And you've got a bit of restricted shoulder mobility, but you feel very powerful. And you just need to get the line right to be able to use your muscles properly. Yeah. Then maybe my technique is better. But if you're, yeah, like for example, like using you know, like say, say James Williams, for instance, who's like, who you, who you coach? Yeah, I, th I think he's a perfect example of he's going to be loads better, a lot quicker using your technique and like and basically playing to his strength and harnessing that those like anterior delts and shoulders and triceps. And I think that believe it or not, he's actually one of the people that got me into teaching it more because. I was trying to get, I was trained technique at 100 kilos for so long, trying to get the rat and it, and it just, it just wasn't happening. And it was, it was logging 150, you know what I mean? Um, struggling because his timing and everything was so out that he was just making it harder for himself. And then you've got this, as a coach, you're given this scenario. It's like, do I keep plugging and drilling this technique until it clicks? Yeah, I let him do what's natural, and then I was yeah, like, or what, yeah, play to play to his strengths, like yeah, yeah. exactly. Where we're at, so th this kind of this will make sense to people if anybody's still fucking listening about this because we're going around in circles. But but I think I think this is a this is a brilliant example how we both can be right with our approaches. Is like using James as an example. Like I think is I think. <laughs> Like he's gonna he's gonna get better results a lot quicker doing it doing it like doing it like you said and playing to those strengths. But someone like me, I don't know if you remembered when I um like when I, when I started or whatever doing first novice comp, I was doing like could do like two fifty deadlift, but I couldn't do fucking I couldn't do like an eighty log, I couldn't do a ninety push press or whatever. 
like my upper body, my upper body and my shoulder strength and tricep strength was like so, so far behind. I was like no repping overhead events if I did a strongman thing. So yeah. that was what led me to learn that, you know what, I'm not bothered how long it takes. I'm going to, I'm going to learn this kind of weightlifting approach because my fucking shoulders and triceps, I've been training a bit of strict press, a bit of bench, incline press for a, a few years. And the progress is just so slow for me that I'm going to, I'm going to try, try a different way and learn a more efficient way and see if I can yeah, and I completely... ha harness some of the explosive it's stuff. Like, that... What's he called? The one England's Dan. Dan, Dan Benson. Dan ben yeah. Dan Benson. Like if say I coached him, I, I wouldn't change his, log technique because he's so explosive and powerful and he's, he's got it dialed but then if someone came to me that you know had like they're just they're a bit slower at moving and the more usually come with a bigger frame and you know what I mean and they've got that kind of raw power upper body and I could see they're struggling with the timing then I will transition them more that way but there are people I coach that don't do it and it works fine and I, i'm a big believer in if it's working don't fix it kind of thing yeah. which is why i say with the split jerk and the power jerks i don't really know if it's better i just know rob kearney started doing it and his log increased a lot so that's my only evidence to it but on the push press i do really believe it is just because at the end of the day on a push press whether you dips perfect or not, you're going to be using, if your head goes through quick, you just, you're left with triceps to, to, to accelerate the log and lock out. Whereas if you lean back, you're in a better position mechanically. And also you're engaging a lot more muscle groups to lock the log out. So I believe in a push press in my head, there's no argument to it being better. When you move in around the implement on a jerk, I think that I don't know the answer. I don't, I don't do it. I don't coach anyone who does it well, apart from you, but you kind of, uh, you know, coach yourself in the technical aspects. So it's like, I just don't have the knowledge to know if it's better or not. I'm yeah. Well, th this is where I disagree a little bit because the, whether you're doing a split jerk, power jerk, whatever jerk or a push press, like, we're always looking, regardless of object, of vertical vertical bar path. It shouldn't be out a, a little bit in front. A lot of people are. A lot of people will split jerk and they'll jump forward because the dips the dips wrong and they're kind of getting away with it with a split jerk because they're jumping underneath it. But really, we shouldn't be doing. We, sh we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be doing it. Um, and we should be, should be aiming for like basically a good a really good jerk a prerequisite is is actually a fucking awesome line on a push press regardless of whether that's dumbbell log axle or whatever and that's why for instance me like say my jerk goes my jerk goes up loads when actually I, I work a little bit on getting my push press technique better and I get my push press technique better and then my jerk jumps up because I get better at driving through the legs and keeping keeping a, a better line um but so my belief on it is i think that if somebody's got like a truly truly good push press and not a kind of basically a st strict press with a little bit of leg drive that a lot of people do they've got like a, a really good push press in terms of line like like say Say someone like Aaron Page, for instance, his, his log press was his push press technique was brilliant. I thought, um, mm. even um, even like Luke Stoltman, we'll look at. I know, I know I know he's kind of kind of doing both. Really, I think he he's um, he's, uh, he's his lines really good. His bar pass really good. And you say he's keeping his head back too, so great. Um, but, but basically, I think that if you're you're keeping, I, I'll always think that if if you're tr if you take your video from the side, regardless of what object you look, what object you're lifting, and if you're truly keeping a ver vertical pa vertical path with a push press, then I'll, I'll always believe that that you can uh, you'll be able to jerk a little bit more. 
But if yeah, you, well, the dip, the dip, I'm not arguing with the dip. The dip should be the same. I just think it's the transition to the triceps that, like, if you look at, I, I just have to check then because I was 99.9% .9 certain, but I didn't want to say in case I was wrong. But Aaron Page keeps his head back as well. Yeah, well, same, same, same with Luke. But the point being that the that their log technique is straight up like a straight line. Like, yeah, no, like, no, I agree, but. When you bend like back, they're, like they're kind of doing both. The yeah, but the dip I'm talking about is the same. When you bend back, you put your shoulders under the log better because your hips go forward. So your shoulders come up slightly forward as well, and then you're under the log. Whereas if you put your head through, I, I just think your, your head's in the way. It's impossible for it to be perfectly straight which is why people always step forward a couple of steps if they put their head through. Because unless you're, unless that log is racked where your head is, you can't push it vertical overhead. It, ha it has to, it's just slightly in front, which is why I say on a jerk, people put their head through and they go forward enough to counteract that on the jerk. Yeah. Whereas on the push press, I just believe that it's a weak line of power if you put your head through. Like it, it, it's really noticeable. Try it on your next push press because I know you've got about a 105 push press, haven't you? At what? On the log. 120. Push press on the log? Yeah. Is it? All oh, right, I don't remember that. At the moment? No, probably like one, probably do like 115 at the minute. All oh, right, okay. I thought it was less than that. But try it on a push press. Have an experiment because once you find the groove with it, you just go, ah, okay. And instead of having that, like, getting to the point where you're just trying to lock it out really slow like this with your head through and shaking and just about getting it, if you lean back, the lockout will be much faster. But the trade-off with it is the stability overhead, which is why the people who lean back on a log and lock out, you'll notice, often go the opposite way and they lock out and step backwards really common to, to see that Eddie Hall's done it and dropped a fucking log on his head. Hicks, he's done it on his 220. Uh, Aaron Page always running backwards a couple of metres with logs because you end up sometimes leaning a bit too far back and the log goes behind you. Um, whereas the goal is to obviously put it in the straight line. So I believe if you push press with your head through, you'll step forward. And if you push press with your head back, if you get it right, you'll be, you'll be fine and stable. But if you misgroove it, you'll end up feeling like you've pushed the log behind you and end up running backwards really fast. But you'll have seen me on my strip log at Hicks's actually. I did a 150 strip log and ended up walking fucking basically to the door in Hicks's because I just misgrooved the position and it shoots. It's weird because when it goes behind you, the pressing power is crazy. You'll just lock it out, but you'll end up going really far back. Yeah. So anyway, what we what we do agree on is the fact that we don't think that you should be thinking about getting your head through any like Shane Shane Shane's belief is keep keep your head back. My belief is just don't don't, don't try and put your head through, but keep keep your head somewhere that that just you're is. more on the side of if you fix the dip, you fix the press. Is that right? Yeah, I think with most people, yeah, I think that you look at the log technique. Look, most people look at the log technique and the ever so slightly the dipping forwards and the logs roll it. So they're, they're like pressing in an arc or pressing slightly forward. And then this will result in like what you're saying, like people will do the shuffle forward to receive it or whatever. Whereas I think most people, they just need to fit, fit, fix the line and can get it, get it vertical. I think... Um, most people like if they fix that they don't really need to worry whether they're like i just think the head that getting the head through is a fucking shit cue for, for anything that for because it i think it encourages that that kind of shuffle forward that shouldn't be happening if your line's correct what and does if sarah teach on the jerk to you out of interest on a barbell i should not really mention that um Oh, can't can't think actually. But like an exact, I don't know if you've ever seen um, 
a quite a famous clock off video teaching the teaching. Oh, you're wearing punches and mitts. Yeah, exactly, and that and that's a, that's an example. And these te- like like for anybody listening, look it up on YouTube. Clock off, punchy, punching face, jerk, or whatever. And and he's actually teaching this, and this is like obviously an Olympic weightlifter teaching somebody how to jerk, and he's saying that you shouldn't be pushing the head, po- 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 poking the head through. Um, do you like think with it's a common cue from like intermediate weightlifting coaches then, but not advanced coaches, because I hear that cue a lot mm. in CrossFit as well. I hear it a lot in CrossFit. But it it, it go it, it's like a similar thing to like say what we're saying about people say, keep your elbows up, high elbows, and get get tight in your lats on deadlift and stuff like that. There's stuff like that that I I I fucking don't agree with, and I think it's in the same kind of same kind of thing yeah i think if the la- if the if the line's good yeah your head should be no your head should be your head should be back anyway to let the, that bar bar bar, tra- bar bar travel yeah i think it's just one of those things that like someone tells someone something so then they pass it on to the next person and they pass it on to the next person and um then it just becomes this thing that everybody says, but no one actually knows. Like to, to me, get getting the head through, getting the head through just makes d- like I'm th- now we're thinking about it and discussing it. Like it just makes zero sense to me in a, in any situation. So we'll agree on that, Shane. Right. <laughs> I think mine's just come from. But what you what you're changing the mechanic and it making a vast difference to me, who I believe I got to a point where I can't. I was struggling. Basically, my I don't want to go much bigger than what I am, and I got to the point where I was like, I don't think I can progress this log unless I grow some size, and I didn't want to really. I tried and I thought this just isn't for me, and then um, changing the mechanic, I thought, oh shit, I can get past that point by this change so for me it was a light bulb and I thought if it can fix it for me I think it can that's kind of where it came from if that makes sense yeah so to wrap up we're sick we're advising that you don't that you definitely don't get don't get your head through on the log because if you if you try and get your get your head through it's going to fuck up that line regardless of whether you're doing push press jerk whatever like you, it's going to fuck up your line if you try and if you try and get your head through through early, and it's going to encourage you to probably going to encourage you to to dip forward and and shuffle forward. So and think about your dip, and don't think about elbows up. It should feel pretty weightless, and you know it should the rack position should be somewhat comfortable, and the dip the vertical dip should feel. You know, easy to achieve. If it's if it's rolling forward, or all you think about is elbows up. That's what you need to fix right. first, isn't it? Yeah, that's what yeah, you need. 100%. To fix. And then, and then if it basically if you if your line if you if your line feels good, if your push press feels good, then then stick with it and don't interfere with it. But if you're somebody that that um, like say has got has a really strong upper body. Uh, strong in the anterior delt, strong in you've got a strong bench or whatever. Have a go at what what Shane's saying about um, keeping you like not just uh, keeping your head kind of in the start position. Actually, actively try keeping your head back and and see what happens. My my cue to it is watch yourself lock out the log. So you should be look, looking at the log, and then just as you lock, your head goes through. But almost at the same time as you lock, your head goes through. That's what I look for. Instead of your head is through and then you're trying to lock out. And that's when you see people balance the log on the head because they just don't have the power to finish it. Whereas if the head was back, they'd have managed to move it from that sticking point and then the head goes through. If that is a better image for you to picture. Yeah. Because I'm sure everybody's seen someone get a log stuck half a centimetre over their head and then end up resting it on there. Or the other, or the other way, which is another topic, is when you get to that point where you're just getting stuck, just uh, rebend your knee, and you're under- do a head push press. <laughs> <laughs> no, re- rebend the rebend the knee, and you. All oh, right, you're down. Under it. yeah. But anyway, that's a, that's another topic for another day, right? Anyway, that's cool. 
cool with that, Shane. I enjoyed that. Having a fucking yeah, good half hour, wasn't it, Josh? Good discussion. Right, I'll see you in a bit, mate. See you, mate.